Hi, George here. And I wanted to talk about the brand new Affinity Canva, which is amazingly enough free. Now there is a cost in here. I'll tell you about that when we get to it. But most of what you're used to with Affinity Photo is now free. But there are a lot of changes and a lot of differences in here. It's basically the original Affinity Photo, but things have been moved around a little bit, not too much. I haven't found much missing yet. But the biggest change you'll see it right up here at the top. We no longer have the personas up here. Let me bring up Affinity 2. This is Affinity 2 right here. And notice we have our personas, Lookify persona, Develop persona, Tone Mapping persona, and Export persona. All of those are gone. And those are now replaced with Vector, Pixel, and Layout. And also this new Canva AI. And the missing personas are still here. You just need to know how to find them. All you have to do is click on a pixel layer, like right there. We now see the pixel layer selected. And now we also up here, there are the different personas. There's your develop persona, your liquify persona, and your tone map persona. So pretty easy to find once you know where they are. Now the one persona that we're not seeing over here is the export persona. And that's just moved over here right hand side where it says export right here. Then you have all of your different options in here for exporting out. There's your export box for instance. And that's just showing a layer overlay that I have on this particular project. Whole document, there we go. And here's the export button there as well. So all of your export functions are now over here, right hand side. Now the vector, this is the same tool as the Affinity Designer. That's their vector drawing program. Pixel is the same thing as Affinity Photo right here. And then layout is the same thing as Affinity Publisher. So you're actually now getting all three programs in the one program interface. So in a sense, this is now far more powerful than it used to be. It's now three programs instead of just one program. Now I mentioned that there is still a cost in here and that's if you go for the Canva AI. There are a lot of new AI tools in here. They can do a lot of what you would expect from AI, but this is where you have to pay for it. The AI is not free. And the basic single person subscription, it's gonna be a subscription like we have over on Canva. The basic subscription is 120 per year. So it's not cheap, but if you like AI, this might be worth it. There's over here, this little generate button right there. If you click on generate and you haven't signed up for this yet, you'll get this with a little ad for upgrading right there. And again, the cost for that, the basic cost, the lowest level is 120 per year, but everything else is free. But let's talk about Pixel right here. Just look at the differences in here between the new Pixel part of Affinity Canva, as opposed to the previous Affinity Photo, which I have right here. Let's start at the very, very top. Let's see if I can line these things up. There we go. Notice we have file, edit, that stays the same. Text and document have been reversed for no particular reason. We have vector, pixel, layer, view, and we're missing select, arrange, and filters. So there are three menu options up here that are no longer showing. Plus we have this new one here, pixel. In the pixel, we have a few things here. Are your filters right here. So they're still here. They're just hidden under this new pixel menu. And you'll find some of the select stuff, for instance, over here under layer. All your layer selection options are right down over here. If you're looking for selections on just an image in here, you'll find that right here. Here's your auto select, there's objects, and here's groups. So it still does that. It's just been moved to a different location. So, so it's still basically the same thing. It's just things are moved around a little bit. Left-hand side over here, we have our tools panel. And you'll see a few differences in here. Let me see if I can line this up again. That's kind of basically lined up. They've moved these things around a bit. And as you can see here, the icons are now different but they still do the same thing. We have the move tool up here, our crop tool is right here or right down over here. Here's the object selection tool. That's when they had this kind of an owl look right there. So your tools are still here. They're just a little different position and the icons have changed, but they all work basically the same way. If you click on hold, we still have our little pop-out menus just like that. So that's all working basically the same. There is a new little floating menu right down here, little floating tool set. Some of your most used tool options, for instance, the move tool is right here. This also has the perspective tool, the mesh warp tool, and the deform tool, all contained in this one floating menu. Come down to the bottom, we have our customized tool options down here. And just like before, you can come in here and do customizations on the tools and the toolbar and how things are laid out. So you do have some options like that. Just a bit of a difference on how things look. Let's go back over here again. Come down just a little bit. This panel right here, where the personas used to be and had some additional buttons in here. This whole line right here, this is now gone. 
A few things will show up in here, such as we have the auto select options up here. We come down a little bit further. Notice we also don't have this line right here either. Here's some of your alignment options, for instance, in here. Even though a lot of our buttons are missing now, you can expand the menu up here. Click on these three dots, brings up the Studio Manager, and in here you can either show or hide any of the options up in this section here. There's your vector, your pixel, your layout. You can add in slice if you want to right there. Add in retouching and color grading, typography, and compositing, or you can have them all in here if you want to, giving you a much larger range of options right here from the top menu. If it's too many to fit in the area, you get an arrow right here, and that shows you your additional options right down in there. If you want to bring back tools up here, you can do that. This area up here, right click on this. This is your toolbar. Click on Customize Toolbar, and we can then add in a lot of our tools right down through here. And there's all these different tools that can be added into that section. So you can bring back a lot of what's missing. It's just not up there by default. So if there's a favorite tool that you have, I'm sure you'll find it over here. And let's just bring in something basic up here. Maybe our set of alignment tools right here. Just grab that and drag up into the toolbar. And there we go. We've now added those back up here into the toolbar. You can also drag those off. There we go. And they've now been removed from the toolbar. And you can choose to show icon only or icon and text. That's up to you or reset to the default setting just by clicking on that. So very easy to customize the interface. And I think you can add back in what you're missing up here pretty easily just by customizing the toolbar. Let's look at the right hand side now. And I have these basically set up the same way. I have color at the top, layers in the middle, and navigator at the bottom. And it's basically the same layout between these two programs. The color panel looks exactly the same. Layers looks exactly the same, works the same. Slight difference over here, toggle visibility. That now has eyes on it. It's the same thing though, toggle visibility. The size of the layers is a little bit smaller now, which I think that's a good thing. And below the layers are standard buttons. Again, just a slight visual change on some of those, but they're all still basically the same thing. And the panels work the same as they used to work. So not really a whole lot of difference over here on the right-hand side. But basically, as you can see, I don't think you're really losing anything. Now, a big question on this, a lot of people like using Affinity Photo for camera raw images. So we're here in Affinity Photo 2. Let's open up a camera raw file. File open, and I'll choose this one right here. Let's open this up. There we go. And notice that this takes us over into the develop persona. And here we have a lot of tools over here. Red eye removal, blemish removal tools, overlay paint tool, overlay erase tool, overlay gradient. Right hand side, we have basic lens, details, tones, and overlays. Lots of options over here on this panel on the right hand side. Let's see what happens when they open up this same image over inside Affinity Canva. So I'm in the pixel section here, file and open. Remember, same image, there we go. One interesting thing to note here, I'm already sure how this is working, but notice I have the same picture open in two different programs now, so they're not overlapping, which is interesting. I wouldn't dare edit these with the same image open in two programs. You can see here, once I did that, this is now open up in the develop module. So we still have our develop module up here, except that it was hidden until you opened up a raw file, a camera raw file. And again, our tools, left-hand side here, red eye removal, blemish removal, and so forth are still here. We still have our options over here, right-hand side. There's basic, here's lens, here's details, here's tones, there's masks. Instead of overlays, it's called masks now. But the same basic layout, you still have the same developed persona. It's just hidden until you open up your raw file. But as you can see, I think everything is still here. I don't think anything has been lost. It just may take a little bit of hunting down to find that. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time.